Hello everyone, it's Attacker Summoner 2 here, and for today, so, we have got on ourselves another review for today's video, and the topic we're about to review is the long-awaited and anticipated remake, the Paper Mario franchise, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, a great classic game that was remake from the GameCube title, and since then, the Paper Mario series has been quite in a strange place for over a decade since the release of a couple of games. Ever since the release of Paper Mario Sticker Star, or some would like to argue the downfall of the series started with Super Paper Mario, the series hasn't exactly been the same since. They've, we've been getting a lot of brand new mechanics changed from time to time, and while I don't personally mind Paper Mario Mario Color Splash or the Origami Gang, I do understand that there was something really missing in what made the first couple Paper Mario games so special to begin with. And while Super Paper Mario kind of retains that, Sticker Star and the last couple of games we were given kind of didn't feel like the same series we've been playing for a while now. But now the Thousand Year Door is here, and what makes this incredible is that this marks the first time in the series that a the same console we were given two Paper Mario games on that same part. Given that we were just given Origami King a few years back, and now with the Thousand Year Door remake, this marks the first time to have two Paper Mario games in the same console. And it's crazy to me that we've gotten two major RPG games, ones that fans thought were never going to happen, that are now on the Switch is incredible to me. So I'm going to be re re reviewing the Thousand Year Door remake on whether or not it's worth your purchase, from its flaws, from its great, you know, from its cons, from the gameplay aspect, the story, and whatnot. It's pretty much all there. Now keep in mind that I'm only on chapter 5 so I haven't fully completed the story yet but I want to give you my personal first impressions on it because there's a lot I want to say about it. First of all, let's kind of talk about the graphics, since I feel like the visuals and graphics are the most important one when talking about a remake. Now, there has always been a debate on whether or not or what is considered to be a remake or a remaster, and I've stated this many, many times before, that a remaster is a game that fully updates the graphics while still retaining the same thing, while the remake is basically changing an entire, the entire game while still retaining its story. And yes, and while this whole graphic thing may consider to be a part of a remaster standpoint, there's a reason why Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is even considered to be a remake. First of all, gameplay changes and visual standpoints. The visual updates can be shown very clearly between the GameCube version and the Switch version. Everything itself is fully been updated from start to finish. You can tell that it went from basically pixels to having that storybook standpoint, to which, yes, that is one of the main parts that many fans argued back then was that Paper Mario wasn't doesn't exactly feel like you're playing a Paper Mario game since it doesn't have that storybook aspect since after all this whole story basically starts out as a book I mean that's pretty much it and it's all thanks to a certain animation studio being Mars and Animation Planet and for those who don't know who they are they are known as the same animation company that was involved with a few Sonic games notably the iconic Sonic Unleashed intro that featured one of the best well good looking intros and animations in the Sonic series, along with them being involved with the Sonic franchise, Sonic movie franchise, so you can tell that Marza had a huge standpoint in this one, and you can tell there's a huge graphical standpoint from it alone. I mean, Hooktail scene alone kind of goes to show how much they change from the light in to having that storybook aspect. That's what makes this a remake and not a remaster, and that's why I find this such a great part about what made the Thousand Year Door so game so special. It makes you feel like you're reading a storybook. Now, as for the story itself, it is the same old say, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door story we're known for, and it does bring back the one thing that was also missing from the Paper Mario series, the RPG standpoint. And no, I'm not talking about the same mechanics from Super Paper Mario or the mechanics from Sticker Star or Origami King. I'm talking about actual RPGs that requires you to have turn base, along with the return of partners. That's right, the return of partners are back, and given the fact that the whole gameplay and the RPG turn base point also got, gives out some paper vibes given the fact that this is literally a storybook. You can tell that they did bring back the whole turn base RPG and it really gives out a nice flair. Every mechanic that you were given, especially with the bunch of badges and partners that you were given, goes to show how much they managed to put a lot of detail into making this a worthwhile re remake. 
Your partners have also returned after such a long, long time. Given that we technically were close to having partners in Origami King, the Thousand Year Door remake did bring back the partners and what made them special to begin with. Each of them has their own mechanics with their own stories and their own themes that are surprisingly mature for a Mario game. Then again, Mario games tend to go into some mature themes every now and then, and Paper Mario is definitely one of them every now and then. Every character has their own arc and their own backstory, which, I mean, not really backstory, but it really makes you care about each of the partners, and all of them have their own unique mechanic, along with a brand new badge system to which you can collect a lot. Now, one of the major things I really adore is the music. Every soundtrack has been remixed from start to end, just like the graphics and the story, and... It's all thanks to the music team, and what makes it even better is that if you don't prefer the new music, just like Super Mario RPG Remake, you are able to use a badge that are able to listen to the old-timey music from the GameCube version. So you can either listen to the new version on the Switch, or you can listen to the classics with the GameCube just by a badge alone, and that's what I really adore about the music itself. The badges, like I mentioned, are pretty hard to collect, but can be worthwhile as each of them requires a lot of new mechanics and can make Mario's moveset a little bit more different than usual. Now, all the flaw, now all the great th things I've stated about this game can't really be there without talking about the flaws. Another big problem that this game still retains to this day is backtracking. One of the major things that fans were always complaining about when it comes to the Thousand Year Door was the amount of backtracking you have to do when it comes to certain quests and side quests. The trouble mechanic has returned from the lur from the last game and it is still an issue from what I remember from the fact that you can only choose one trouble quest and not like more than once because if you don't want to do that same quest then you have no choice but to pay like at least a bunch of coins in order to cancel that and trust me getting coins in this game is a little scarce and difficult if you don't grind correctly and like I mentioned with the backtracking it can be a bit of a pain in every now and then especially whenever you go to chapter 3. Glitzville is one of my favorite parts of the game but the backtracking in it is so insane because of the amount of fighting you have to do and basically replenishing your energy and all your mechanics altogether. Now thankfully backtracking has been sort of toned down with the introduction of fast travel, what well, fast travel was in the original, but the fast travel was a bit more tedious rather than easy. Thankfully the remake managed to have all the backtracking toned down with a brand new fast travel mechanic that makes you go to all of the many worlds at once so you don't have to go through that, but backtracking is still a bit of an issue there, especially when you have to go through so many collectibles and getting a lot of shine sprites and pretty much a lot. But overall, is this truly a worthwhile remake and is this worth any of your purchase. Absolutely. The Thousand Year Door remake is worth your purchase and it retains what made the Paper Mario franchise so special to begin with. And given how it's now number one in the eShop and now is pretty much one of the best selling games as of right now and this week, I feel like I do hope that Nintendo has listened to us fans that this is what we want from the Paper Mario series. We do not want to see any new mechanics change from the next game. We just want to have the two good old turn-based RPG along with having the great characters, having great character arc stories, and, you know, unique characters that people would like to see every now and then. I'm mostly coming, to, I'm mostly just saying this from some of the critics itself, but Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake is a worthwhile purchase if you want to try this out. Let me know your thoughts in the down below about this. What do you all think of the Thousand Year Door remake by itself? And with that, leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more videos, follow my Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time. And remember this, once a legend, always a legend.